Frank, you're hot. That's right. Frank joins us now on the Roy Tota Guest Line. How are we doing today, Frank? Doing very good, brother. Just wanted to uh, first, can I just say this here? I want to thank all of you guys at the at the station, man, for my wonderful birthday gift. I got everything that came in. You guys are absolutely right. Shame on Amazon and the Pony Express because I was able to open the mailbox and I saw the good stuff that you guys sent. So thank you so very much, brother. Interesting because uh, are you on some other station? I mean, do you, do, you do, do you do some hits on other stations that we don't know? You're cheating on us? I mean, what's going on? Because I know I got two dozen golf balls sitting in my office that have your number on them. So I know they haven't gone anywhere because I'm not, I'm too cheap to put those in the mail. You know how much two dozen golf balls will cost? I figured I'd rather see you in person and hand them to you. So I said all that just to make sure that you got caught right on live on on the on, <laughs> on the radio station. Got gotcha. him. Hey, um, yep, got him. Uh, I want to ask you: there are some rumblings, and again, they're just rumors that Marvin Harrison Jr., of course, the great standout wide receiver from Ohio State, does not want to play for the Arizona Cardinals if selected at number four. What do you say to something like that? I say, man, you got cojones to say something that early this, at this at this stage of the game right now. I mean, like that's that's crazy. Um, when you look at the numbers of, of if you look at the teams that are selecting in the draft pick, and you're considered to be one of the top picks in the draft in the top three picks at least, um, and you're considered to be the best uh, player potentially to come out of the draft. It takes cojones to say that, man. Considering the fact that you are looking at a young stud quarterback in Kyler Murray and an offense that can become very explosive um, if it had the right pieces. But it's an organization that continues to not grade well in these surveys. And, you know, here these are, these kids, as a kid in high school, you go play anywhere you want. And then you, you, you get an opportunity to go in the national, you get in a, a really good uh, college football program, play for Ohio State. Now you get to the next level, and you can't decide where you want. You can't. You have no say in where you you can play next. Isn't that? Could this be a problem now with NIL and everything else that's going on in our world in sports? Well, you know, I would agree with you in this conversation that you do get the right to I mean these kids now feel like they're entitled to say what they want to say and yep. think what they want to think. But the NFL doesn't present that package. It's only been a couple of players in the history of the NFL that have walked on stage or done something of this magnitude and says we're not playing for that particular organization because we don't want to. Well, that's not necessarily how it works. Um, and I can actually just say, I can make this statement here. Go boldly ask Larry Fitzgerald what he thought. Mm -hmm. The Hall of Famer, that kind of conversation as a wide receiver when you think that it depends on someone catering and coddling to you 100% of the time in the NFL. It's a job. It's a great job. And you're going to get paid extremely well. The situation right now is you have a young quarterback, a young offensive line, you got young coaching staff. And it's up to you to make a decision if you want to make a change in the organization or not, or unless you just want to go get caked at an organization that might make you feel good. He has to make his own decisions. He went to Ohio State for a reason. He could have probably chose 12 other to 15 other schools in the country when he went to college, but he chose Ohio State to give him the best opportunity to be drafted top. That's where he's at right now. And I would think also he, his, his ability to shine more so with the Cardinals, they need the top-notch receiver. He's going to get the same amount of money, whether he, they, he's forcing somebody to trade him or not. But as far as shining and being part of a new organization, but I think what Rock alluded to is the F-minus that Michael Bidwell got from these players and, and referenced. You just wonder how much that is influencing him. So what would be the solution to, to dissuade him from that and want to buy into the Arizona Cardinals? Well, you have to look at the changes. The F minus came before we went out and got before before Mike made some decisions, and that was going to get him a, a new general manager in Monty. So when he got a new head coach, and JG and JG, you can you guys pretty much know him. You've seen him all last year and how he handled himself in the locker room, how he handled himself every week after the press conference. So you can look at the coach, you can look at the commitments Mike made, the changes that have been made thus far in just one year, and I think that you know you have to look at it from that standpoint. What would happen in the past, I got my own stories in the past, but in 1998, we went to the playoffs with the team we had. Some other things transpired. Larry Fitzgerald, you can name him, and Quan Bolden, and a couple of these guys, they went to the Super Bowl. They had a chance to play for it. In the same organization, but changes are being made. So if that's how you're looking at it from that standpoint, then the, the best position for him is being drafted. Uh, 28, 20, 
28, 29, 30, 31, 32. All those teams uh, that went to the Super Bowl last year have a history of being an organization that have gone out and done the things they need to do for a player. But when you're drafted in the top five or top ten, you're typically catching organizations that went through a struggling spell, and that's just where it's at. So the best thing I can say for them is, man, good luck with that statement, but somebody's going to draft you that's probably don't have everything uh, put together in, our, in, in their organization. And, Frank, just to be, be um, spot on, the, the that that lead grades came out from this August, I say August, till end of November of 2023. So those are recent grades that are coming that way, and that's what he's looking at. I'm sure that's what he's looking at. But to your point, if it, if if able to do so for Larry Fitzgerald or Frank Sanders or somebody goes and gets a hole and gets in this kid's ear or uh, somebody or his people just say, yes, we see that, we acknowledge it, but here's the other side of that. But those are recent grades that came out last week. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's unique, man, that that, that, that would be – Still a uh, conversation piece. The organization is an organization. Not every thirty, not not all the thirty-two organizations in the NFL are the same. Dallas runs an organization totally different. But there's some things that I would look at it from this perspective. I'm going to go be the change for the Arizona Cardinals. I don't need to be coddled. I don't need to be handled. They pay me to do a job. If I got the teammates and the coaching staff there, that's my job. That's what I'm supposed to do. And when I get there. I'm going to be the change. And once once I get to that spot, that's just basically it. And you're absolutely right. The money doesn't change. I mean, if you, well, it changes drastically if you go from number one to number two, three, four, to number 25, 26 to get someplace where you want to be. But we don't have that option. The draft doesn't allow that. So that conversation or the speculation behind that um, is only, only an eye so for the Arizona Cardinals. But someone's going to get drafted. Uh, two picks are going to get drafted in the first round pick. And the Cardinals got 13 of them. 13 players are going to get drafted and get an opportunity to live their dream. Frank Sanders is our guest on the right Toyota guest line. All right, Frank. So in Denver, they have officially released quarterback Russell Wilson. In your estimation, A, does he still have game? B, where do you think he's going to end up? And would he be a starter or is he going to be a backup someplace? You know, I really thought Denver had made a good decision on getting Russell, but not only just Russell, but going out and getting, you know, going out and getting the coach that they brought in last year, man. And I thought that was was going to be a good a good situation. But apparently, there are some things about Russell Wilson and his and his behavior mm-hmm. in the locker rooms that have been three an eyesore to the team that have, that has not allowed him to garnish that to you know that leadership role that um, that you, you want your first you want your first court first string quarterback to have. Um, if he was going any place, uh, I'm, I'm going to assume that with the youth of the quarterbacks that are, that are in the NFL right now, he's going to go as a backup. And right now, his salary being $37 million is not something that you want to give a backup quarterback, but the youth, of the, the youth of the quarterbacks that are in the league right now and the young offensive coordinators that are taking place, they want to create their own. They want to have their own man in the right spot. They don't want to have an old head. That seems to only do it his way, and unfortunately, that's 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 the downside for Russell right now. But he's going to get paid from the Broncos and wherever he goes. If he still wants to live this dream as an NFL quarterback, he has to kind of you know do like a Nick Foles did, you know, first round draft pick, go through the process, didn't do well the first couple of years, had a bad moment, got on the bench, and next thing you know, he had a good season and Two. found himself you know winning a Super Bowl and. Next thing you know, he got shipped off to Jacksonville, the starting quarterback, which only lasted about four days and two donuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, last one for you. Uh, a legal tampering starts in uh, several days, like March 11th. March 13th, you can officially sign all the free agents out there. Um, if Frank Sanders is a GM for the Cardinals, what, what impactful players or players, uh, what position are you tracking in the free agency market right now? Or maybe what, what position are you tracking to try to go get an impactful player? I'm looking at cornerback, definitely cornerback. Um, it's definitely one. An edge rusher that somebody I can get on the edge that you know that can cause some problems. Um, that's that's physical, athletic, um, but also willing to make the adjustments to come in and be a, a leader for us on our defense. I'm not sure where we are with Kazara White. Uh, as he was, our, he was our Mike linebacker, and last year I thought he did a wonderful job. Monty last year brought about 30 players in from the free agency pool, and and most of those guys one minute they did a pretty good job. 
unfortunately, we didn't have a starting quarterback. So right behind this, I'm going into the backup quarterback role. I got to find somebody that can come in and show some leadership, a little bit opposite of Kyler, but somebody that also, if something happens to Kyler, would be ready to go. That has seemed, that seems to be a big ordeal for us right now. Forty something million dollars into a quarterback, but if he goes down, our entire offense sputters. And that's something I just can't have. I can't let happen. You guys talked about it overly, over and over and over that we let go Colt McCoy and we thought we should have kept him because he'd have had leadership and he'd have known, he would have knew what to do. And, um, unfortunately that, that backfired on, backfired, um, in our face, man, the first couple of weeks of the season. We always enjoy you, buddy. Thank you for making some time. All right, boss. You have a good week and hit them straight. I appreciate that, brother. I'm coming down to get my golf balls to save you that uh, that pa- that post you see. Yeah, that's sh- yeah, that's <laughs> shipping, man. You know, I mean, uh, it's gonna cost me two. It cost me more than the golf balls. So uh, anyway, no, I used to just call me to go play golf, and then I'll bring golf balls because you're gonna need them all. So I mean, we'll, oh, we'll there's that. a shot. <laughs> Bye, Frank. I'll take that shot, brother. I love you, man. <laughs> See you, man. <laughs> Frank Sanders here on Rocket Manooch with Jimmy B. Coming up, what's on tap? We've got some good college basketball tonight. We'll tell you the schedule uh, as we finish up out here and give you our State 48 roofing uh, update on the, the poll question. It's Rocket Manooch, Jimmy B, here on Fox Sports 9. Check this out. This is the herd.